Cheese Boys, Cheese Girls, and the Cheese Gang. You are now listening to Popcorn and Cheese. Popcorn and Cheese, like friends like But at that time in Iran, where he's from, they were using 22 carat and 24 carat gold, like nice gold, not like diluted, diluted mixed with not the whatever, whatever, Devin whatever, gold. right? Uh, uh, <laughs> The one they use in the 50 cents. Uh, but nah. I went to Athens city center, which is very much like Josie city center. You, you. Very dirty, very crime ridden, mm. very many homeless people, very many young Nigerians. drug addicts. Oh, sorry. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> 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 Hold on, Sorry. it's a <laughs> It is, it is. Uh, one thing I know in heaven, that line. <laughs> <laughs> that line. Oh, we're going to be a lot. We're going to be like... checking. Hi, I'm Pop-Ops, and I've had teeth my whole life. Well, not my whole life. There was an era where I didn't have them. But then I grew up and I got teeth. But I haven't been taking care of them the right way. Have you been brushing your teeth like this? <laughs> How primitive. Introducing you to the new state of the art way of looking after your smile. What's about ever since I started using Smile Sonic? I miss weird things. I miss having a bad breath. Introducing Smile Sonic. <laughs> the new revolutionary electrically controlled toothbrush by the one and only Dr. Smiles. Hi. My name is Robot Boy. You probably think I've got something up my sleeve. No, because I'm wearing a short sleeve. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Smile Sonic. I know what you're thinking. Pops, we have load shedding more South Africa. <laughs> Smile Sonic lasts 21 days with one charge. Charge it once and 21 days of pure brushing. Kiona A. Dr. Smile, Super Sonic. <laughs> I miss the problems of bad breath, talking and people looking away. I miss it. It comes in all white, clean, pale. Mm. I miss my tongue smelling. It has a setting for my tongue. For my tongue. There are some people out there who don't realize the importance of teeth. Ask a vegetarian. Some people are vegetarian because you need teeth to eat meat. Yeah, a tau four. Yes. This is not a paid advert. Mararaka Smile Sonic. Smile Sonic has four different modes. Smile, shine, tongue, and gentle. Smile Sonic. Midnight, pearl. In a tusi, a pearl. But you can still use it with your family. Smile Sonic. Smile Sonic. For those awkward moments when your friends are like, friend, something is vibrating in your bag. God, relax. It's just my Smile Sonic. <laughs> smile Sonic, done by the one and only Dr. Lex Smile. Get yours today at any discount. Smile Sonic. Robo Pops. I'll be some cheese girl and a cheese boy there. We motivate, then we laugh as well. Stay on brand, never hard to sell. Got real chats, now my LOL. So we both got gang and we blessed as hell. See a dollar story. Pets and I'm a guest, a nice and moy. You and I'm a bundles, not of joy. Said it's some pop pops and robot boys. Popcorn and cheese. 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 Popcorn and cheese, popcorn and cheese, call a boy boy like friends like these. Popcorn and cheese, it's great to some of you, me, I'm a son of nine. Which one is this one? Yo, it's not him, it's the shoes. The shoes made him. Yeah, you can't count it in this yo, 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 yo. shoes, eh? Is that, 50, has to be is that 51 in Zulu? Mm. It's Kumala Mashumala Masem. Yini? Which one is this one? I'm a shoe, I'm a shoe, I'm a shoe. This is like something Mazun Gundi would say. <laughs> yeah. Yo, it was hard counting lots of cattle back in the day, ne? Yo, yo, yo. I can't even remember. Gunye Gumili Kotatu, what's number? What's four? Gunye Gumili Kotatu, who's four? 
Zulu is easy, bro. You just add E in front of everything. E car, E studio, E trainee, stream E dogo tela, U dogo tela. Oh, <laughs> guys, that's how you know everybody here is afraid of clapping when you've seen the same clapper for the past three episodes. So, yeah, yeah, it's rough. Well, cheese boys, cheese girls, and the cheese gang, gang. welcome to Popcorn and Cheese. cheese. Proudly brought to you by Streaming Studios. Streaming Studios in the heart of Parkest, where electricity sometimes disappears. But because of careful thinking and actual planning, generators have been installed and lights that don't switch off when the power cuts off are installed. Mm. Streaming Studios mm. for your podcasting needs. All right. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, we are in for a treat today. Yes, Before we introduce our guest, I'd like to introduce a man who had to drive six hours to be here today. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, from behind the mic, a legend from Walkerville. Please put your digital hands together for comedian, farmer, lover, and of course, <laughs> quit driver. The one and only, Titi Chumeric, the Jesus. <laughs> And of course, ladies and gentlemen, looking like the original Nick Next Man, please put your digital hands together for a man who took the colors of the logo and decided to make an outfit here today. He weighs in at 56 kilograms. He's 2.1 meters tall. Ladies and gentlemen, dancing sensation, a man who goes to sleep after reading poetry. Please put your hands together. Make some noise. Give it up for the man, the myth, the legend. And the one and only Robert Bond. Ladies and gentlemen, on the far left, the leader who leads us, the captain of the ship who steers everything, stand up comedian who is seated on the left hand side with his shiny shoes and the white hambe looking like an intern about to present something in a boardroom meeting, sitting like a nervous person who's about to get their results at a clinic. President ah. of the Yellow Folds. That's what you say. That's what you say. That's what you say. That's what you say. Yes. This is how you come dressed, yeah. hoping the beard. results are good. Yeah. <laughs> so, and what did you pick up on the cholesterol, Doc? <laughs> oh, prostate. <laughs> ah, ah, prostate. Oh, God. <laughs> I know I might be positive yeah. today, but I'm hoping that. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Talking about waiting outside the doctor's office. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, mm-hmm. cheese boys, cheese girls, and the cheese gang. Yeah. Mm. Today, we sit with a legend amongst legends. Yeah. Yes. Dressed in a full kit, Michael Jordan basketball kit. Mm-hmm. Rocking the fresh Nike with the signature on the side. He'll tell us a little bit about those a little bit later. Ooh. We are sitting with a, the list is long. A dentist, sure. Yeah. A break dancer, yeah. Artist, a skateboarder, yeah. A toothbrush manufacturer, mm. you, you, a you rap a artist, you, a fashionista, a jeweler, a jeweler, the outer you. shop, tooth fairy, tooth fairy, the, the, ori- the original tooth, tooth fairy. Yo, 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 yo. Do you know how many houses he's mm. been shot out of because yeah. people are like, we have a burglar. <laughs> Gandhi was there, he was there to collect the collect to the inside the cartoon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I don't know how to put this in proper words, but the artist in dentistry, mm. you, ladies you, you and gentlemen, please put oh, your digital hands together. Mm. Help us welcome the one, the only, Which one is Dr. Dr. Smart! Jesus. Oh! Yeah. Malume Alex. Maloons. How are you? Yeah. So I just want to start off by saying both of you are my patients. Yes. Yeah. And uh, me, I, I see these. Yeah. That's it. No, 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 no we, we can yeah, see. Yeah. 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 <laughs> when your teeth look like they're off ramping, you haven't seen like yet. <laughs> I put you are late, so we have to be patient no, for let, you. Let's, let, let's be kind. Let's be kind. Oh. We'll make a space for you soon. Ah, yo, 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 both yo, yo, of you guys who are on this side of the camera. Yes. Both my patients, yeah, smiling so nicely. Sh- doing such a, a stellar job with a great introduction. Yeah. Mm. Uh-huh. I'm so happy to finally be here in this. Oh, man. Shout out, man. I've we been watching that. this, I've been seeing this, and I'm like, one day when I'm big, I, I hope I get in. One day when I'm big. How oh, ironic is it that he's saying that now about this chair when your chair legs is the chair everybody Yeah, else you guys goes. have to bring, we can relax. One like, day when I'm big, like the doctor's smile that, pictures. Yes, yes, yes. Online. Yes. Yeah. 
That's how you know you've made it. I won't lie. That's how you know you've made it in in, <laughs> okay, yeah. in the entertainment industry in oh. South Africa. Oh. No, no, no cap. cap. Yeah. No cap. Once Smile. you sit on Lex's chair. When, it, yeah. when it's anyone's birthday. You've made it. There's a picture of them on Smile's mm. chair. Mm. You know when they say up and coming? Yeah. You know. Go through their Instagram. No chair picture. <laughs> <laughs> and there's other dentists that do that too, but they look dodgy at the back. <laughs> <laughs> like they've started like, they've started it's a it's a nice it? vibe and trend that's happening there's a lot of young dentists doing it now it's nice yeah, yeah. putting themselves out there it's like growing this. they're learning they're confident in their craft it's nice but, but they can only be one Lex Leo and we're gonna talk about that today but before we get into it Uncle Lex I want you to look at that camera that's you over there today I got right? you. I want you to look into that camera I want you to tell the people who you are full name Papa Number plate. Sure. Full name. Bin Even the Tswana name. Even the pack number. And then tell us what you do. All right. Uh, this is Cheese Gang, ne? Yeah. 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 Cheese Gang, my name is Alexander Fezi Mangova <laughs> Abedian <laughs> Rohani. Um, I am a Persian blooded, <laughs> South African born and bred. I'm going to box myself as a creative. I don't yeah. want to say I'm a dentist yeah. and I'm a jeweler and I'm a what and I'm a what. I'm a creative that somehow finds myself, myself, myself. Yeah, there's lots of you. Let's <laughs> no, it's the English on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is this one? <laughs> that finds myself in different spaces using my creativity to contribute to the betterment of the world in some way. Yeah. Help other people yeah. reach their own potential in some way. Um, and I want to brand myself like that instead of a profession, specific profession. I dig that. So I love I that, bro. Have That's you? Dope. Can I ask you a question? Please. Yes. Uh, when can I come to the <laughs> When is the what when is, like? is a gold tooth healthy? <laughs> Yo, off wow. the bat. First question, off the bat. It is like, okay, let's go straight. <laughs> let's go straight. Uh, to yeah. it. it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a loaded question, but if it's done correctly, then no problem. It can be healthy. Healthy really depends on how much of your natural tooth you're cutting away mm -hmm. to replace with gold or is the gold going straight over your natural tooth and you're not doing any damage to your natural tooth? Was your tooth damaged before and you're replacing it with gold? So there's many categories. Because you've so, seen people when they take off their gold tooth and it's like that <laughs> mm. brownish green. Pops. Mm. <laughs> that tooth looks like it was long lean days. <laughs> it, might, it might not be gold also. Oh. It might be synthetic gold. Oh, right? Bronze. And then it, yeah, it can be anything, it can be any metal, and they plate it. And then they fugger, and then they tell you got a gold, and you won't know. So, how much is the percentage of real gold teeth in South Africa right now? <laughs> <laughs> like, so I'm tell you what, high level girls, have you seen his smiles? Oh, wait, so before we get to grill, gold, that's why the building blocks a gold tooth. If a uh, plate, a star. Not it really. depends. If we go and we uh, are, are focused on town and Bree area, and because they're doing those on the side of the taxis also, just there. <laughs> I win. <laughs> Bro, when I used to catch taxis by Bree, there was three stations where people were just, they had pre-made shapes and they're just sticking it. Yo, yo, Ten yo. minutes done. Uh, the yeah. L's go home. Go home with the new two. Yeah, no they call it quick gold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that time it's your taxi fare now you can't pay for the ride <laughs> See, as though they take it out when you don't have taxi fare they count the flyers <laughs> let's 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 ah I'm transient <laughs> <laughs> and when you open this coin box you see the three yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll keep it changed now for <laughs> 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 open the can of worms right I want you I want to know bed. what do you know what the history of the gold tooth is like why did people start all of a sudden I can only hypothesize the history of the gold tooth from when we speak about history, we say history, no? So, yeah. yeah. So, when you said hypothesize, we've got cheese gang from. That's the booking that are watching right you now. You translate. And you, you know, it's in, yeah, hypothesize. I can only guess. Ma barbar. Ma barbar. Ma barbar. All right, so. I can only hypothesize. Mm -hmm. um, many, 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 many years ago, when people lost teeth, they would have to replace it with a material that was either precious, and that precious was to show status, mm. or it had to be a material that didn't mess with the mouth. 
Mm. And at that time, if you go back, back, I don't know, let's say time of... 500 years ago. Yeah. Mm. The Incas and the Egyptians and that vibe of history. Mm. And we see gold teeth during that time, right, in history. We say, okay, well, there was a status thing. And gold is non-reactive in the mouth. Mm-hmm. Right? So it doesn't mess with saliva. Saliva doesn't mess with it. Doesn't corrode, etc. So I assume from that time, it would have been, yeah. it would have been used for its scientific and its status um, characteristics. Oh. Then we fast forward and we say, okay, so <clears throat> gold teeth that we know in the form of grills, let's say around the world, oh. um, started maybe about 50, 60 years ago. Mm. Right? With hip hop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Th- this is in terms of it being a flex. Mm. Oh, in yeah. dentistry, even in the last hundred years, it's been used because we know how to cast it. It's malleable. It's safe in the mouth. And so, I mean, I can tell you a funny story. You see this ring? This ring. No, don't say that was a gold tooth. Let me tell you what it was. Ah. Ah. My man, my man. came and said, I'm so a fool. I'll keep it. Who are you, buddy? <laughs> and you see this ring here. Okay, yeah, listen up. My man, my man. So obviously, yes, I'm a Julian. I'm a dentist. And so what happened? My grandfather, my grandfather's. Yeah. Okay. This ring originally, in its original, original form, was given to my father from my grandfather and my father gave it to me. But it was broken and old and this and that, but it was sentimental. So I was mm-hmm. like, okay, now I need to strengthen it, fortify it, make sure it's good. Okay. My other grandfather, I had to make him a whole set of teeth. He was old, he lost his teeth. So I remade him all of his teeth and then he comes to me with a jar one day. And this is my grandfather from Mahikeng, right? Mm-hmm. He comes to me and he's kept this thing, he's got this jar, chiki, chiki, chiki. And I'm like, what is this thing? And he gives it to me, he's like, I kept you these, these are my teeth, my actual teeth that he kept pulling out. Mm-hmm. And I looked at them mm-hmm. and they were all full of gold crowns, like gold coverings. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. But at that time in Iran where he's from, they were using 22 karat and 24 karat gold, like nice gold. Not like diluted, diluted, mixed with Not the whatever, whatever, Devin whatever, gold. right? Oh. Oh. <laughs> the one they use in the 50 cents. <laughs> Banana. <laughs> That's not gold anymore. On to the next one. Okay. So he gave me this thing. And there was a lot of gold in there. Like high value gold. Yeah. And gold is gold. You melt it down, you start again. Mm. So I melted that. Melted with the old ring. Combined and strengthened this ring. So this ring is now from both my grandfathers. Dope. Oh, with my teeth. grandfather's teeth, teeth and my other grandfather's ring. Yeah. And now it sits here. Mm. Let's check that ring. Hey, hey, don't go too dope. close. You'll smell a uh, fresh air. Never. <laughs> this is dope, bro. Yeah. Nah, that is so dope. <laughs> yeah. No. You can smell it. Yeah. Just, to, <laughs> just to rinse it every day. Okay. No, it actually, it came out really proper, bro. And yeah. you made that, right? Correct. Hey. No, Lex's hey. attention to detail is crazy. So that's, that's why, <clears throat> that's why when I introduced you, I said, <clears throat> I, I realized, right? Um, because a lot of people, when when they see you and you know they haven't made it yet, they go, uh, <laughs> they go, ah, it's just a celeb, it's just a celeb dentist thing, right? A lot of people they think just it's go, hype. You're a celeb dentist. It's just hype, right? Yeah, I don't think I'm actually doing work. Yeah, yeah. And then you actually go and sit with Lex, mm. right? Um, you do your 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 consultation. And you kind of get a, an understanding of how Lex works. And then you start doing the work with Lex. And then you start realizing the attention to detail mm. that he pays to the mouth, right? And to <coughs> yours specifically. Then you start realizing that what Lex is doing is art. Titi. It's a thunder. Doc, this guy switched off the screen then you brought lightning. Titi, we are sorry. We are sorry. Want? Anything we did to offend you, I are sorry. <laughs> He's from you saying me this yeah, man is exactly. from Baha'i. Do you have stronger stuff than me, dog? <laughs> <laughs> then Limpopo. Iran. Now Limpopo. my brother. Yo. Nah, then Limpopo never. Iran was in 300, my man. I think Limpopo is the headquarters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Iran is just yeah. a branch. Yeah. Of it's a franchise. <laughs> franchise. <laughs> Bro, so that's, I think when I started spending time in Lex's chair, I started realizing the attention to detail, right? Yeah. And then you start realizing that over and above what Lex does, he's a creative, right? 
So his attention to detail, his craftsmanship is on another level. Yeah. Then you start realizing, okay, this man's making art in my mouth. Mm. He's not just a yeah. dentist who yeah. is. That's the fun part. That's a fun part of cosmetic dentistry. Um, is the artistic style. I was speaking to somebody yesterday um, about when I started first year. Yeah. And in my in my group, in my class, the professor came in and asked us all, who of you guys did art at high school? Right? And out of the whole class, it was only me who did art. Yeah. And I did well at art. I got a distinction. I got the award. I loved art. I loved that side. I wasn't a maths and science genius. Like my brother. Yo, my brother killed that. My brother, sorry, side note, in university, in maths, he got 120%. Ah, oh, man. Oh, 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 Can you believe? Oh, oh, because oh, when you do all... Oh, 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 when, you, when you do oh, all oh, the oh, questions oh, and you get them all right, they offer you bonus questions. Oh, oh, and he got oh, that and that. Yo, it's the fact that none of us know this fact because we've never, we never got that. I have so many questions. When do the bonus questions come? Dog, like, like do at which they, point uh, do they know? At which point mark, do they know? Yes, they when marked they everything. Mark no, the bonus are right at the end, obviously. Wait, and when how? you've done everything, and you've done it, and you've completed them, you can move on to bonus ones. So we, this information is new to all of us. Mm. Have you ever no. had a bonus section of I any exam? This is the kind of story you will never get. You still have those situations where <laughs> you leave the test and you're like, ah, no, get up. And then they're like, did you do the back page? You're like, what back page? <laughs> Dog, that's like clearing a 30 seconds card, bro. Yeah. Like when you clear the five, you can flip, you it, can over. flip it over. Ah, Your brother's you can flip it over. So what I was saying possible. was like, I mean, I can work hard. I know how to work hard. But yeah. like maths didn't come naturally to me. Okay. Art and creativity, that side of it came very naturally to me. And it made a huge difference in the profession that I'm in. And I realized why. And I realize how important it is to be attentive to detail and to be able to connect with people yeah. and yeah. do this thing, whether it's teeth, whether it's jewelry, whether it's in the music space, whether it's now in, which we'll speak about these boys later. Yeah. Everything requires detail, you know? Like, and You're, speaking of detail, do you know what I appreciate about you the most? And Pops can attest to this. A lot of people in the profession, um, when you do consultations, they'll either do what they're supposed to do and keep it moving without even explaining much because it's their job to know. Mm. Mm. Dog, Lex is like, okay, so this tooth is like this because of this, but you see this white spot here is because of this, 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 this. You mm. end up explaining things that me, someone that hasn't done your course or that isn't in your lane can understand and it makes sense of it. I think and it's vital. How... I think it's vital to help educate patients. So mm. Anyone who becomes my yeah, patient, you, you do that dog while while we're there. Yeah. Every step anyone of the way who's my is. patient, yeah. they've gone through that process, yeah. and I spend time fully educating, mm -hmm. because it's now a team effort mm. for us to get to the end goal of your treatment. Mm. Like I can do the most amazing work, but if you don't know why, why how to look after it, what to do, what to maintain, what causes the Almost problems, like the blah, homework blah, once they've left. Yeah, too. then then we're gonna fail. Not yeah. you're gonna fail. We're gonna fail. Yeah. So so do you, do, no, do you so approach everything you do with like absolute focus? I try to approach everything I do with a like a a pinch of salt. No, uh, a fine uh, brush. <laughs> like this one. I, <laughs> don't worry, it's strong. It's strong. Mm -hmm. Packaging. I try, I try to approach everything I do with a with a concept of excellence, right? Um oh, so can and, I eat popcorn? Is it, is that what I'm Yo, I put up this reel the other day on my page. You must go and see it. There was a popcorn kernel stuck at the back in my gum there that I could not get out for about a month. What? It was under. In, you can't floss it. You can't brush it out. It wasn't one of those. So I had to take some dental instruments. And then I was overseas. Then I couldn't do it. I didn't have my tools. I didn't have the camera. Then eventually I put the camera. I did it. I removed it nicely. I was like, a okay. relief. But, but. We're going to have to change the name of the show. Peanuts and Popcorn cheese. Popcorn, cheese, hey, hey. and don't forget to floss. <laughs> ah, but, the, but, okay. but the point is like… Um, I was absolute focus, yeah, yeah. Focus and excellence. You guys here are doing this show and you put a lot of effort into it. Yeah. Your lines, your focus, your timing, your deliveries. These things are… Of course, they come to you naturally, which is why you're doing this. <laughs> but you make effort. Yeah. And you make effort because you want it to be right. And so, and that's out of a, a love and appreciation for the people who are watching. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So for me, it's very much the same thing. You put in effort 
out of a love and a respect and an appreciation for whether you're my patient, you're my client, you might, you're going to listen to my music, you're going to something, you're my students at university, whatever it is, I have to make as much effort as I can to do justice to you and your trust in me. It's like sure. that. Bars. Well, you know, with, with everything you've mentioned, right, and, and, and also talking about the fact that you, you majored in art when you were younger, you know, and you did well at it. How does the dentist calling come about? Because this is, this is, for you, this is a calling, bro. This is… Well, no. I mean, it wasn't a calling. <laughs> so how does it come about? You, you because, fell in love with it. Like <clears throat> no. Uh, where, where does… Because you know, everything funny. that you do, it, dentistry is like different. You know, the right. other stuff we understand because it all falls Well, actually apart. not. I mean… Because it applies the creativity. When you look at it the, now, everything I'm doing is very nicely interwoven. Yeah. But the thing is, like when I was trying to figure out what to study… I did, I did, I finished high school and then I still didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, one thing that Baha'is do, I didn't explain that I'm Baha'i, but we'll give context to that. Okay, but one so. thing that Baha'is around the world like to do after high school, before university, is if they're able to give a year of their time in service to humanity in some way. And when I speak about service to humanity, we know it as volunteer work, community yeah, work, yeah. helping people for no other purpose other than to help them. For no reward, for no payment, nothing, right? So mm. my parents had said to me, if you don't know and you, and, and you haven't yet realized and understood yourself, the best thing that you can do is spend some time in service to other people. And in that way, you'll find, you'll find yourself. That's yourself. Crazy. Our parents never said to us, you must study this or you must study this or you must study this. And of course, we're very privileged just to be able to do that, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Within the South African context, I 100% understand that. And this is something I would like to speak about, this concept of like privilege and the responsibility that comes with the privilege you get. Like if you're aware of a privilege, you have a responsibility to use that for others. But then it's a waste of that privilege. Bars. You know? So, so basically, I spent this year working with refugees and prisoners of war, drug addicts, <laughs> prostitutes within Europe. Right? Okay. I went to Greece. Uh -huh. And I didn't go to like Mykonos party island part of Greece. I went to Athens city center, which is very much like Josie city center. You, you, very dirty, very crime ridden, mm. very many homeless people, very many young Nigerians. drug addicts. Oh, sorry. Uh oh. You <laughs> 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 think there's a hill bro in, in Greece? Greece. Interestingly, Greece, interestingly, jokes aside, of the oh. African population who is in Greece, it was Nigeria. Yeah. Yes. Atitukumbo. Right? Atitukumbo, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, the reality is so many of our Nigerian brothers and sisters are really struggling where they are and they're trying to make a plan. So they that is the reality. The, world, yeah. the, the reality is people are trying to make a plan. Whether the plan is being made in moral ways and oh, just ways and good ways, is, yeah. you, people are trying to make a plan. You may not have the whole foundation of, oh, morally, this is so important in your life. If you are struggling there by home, if maybe your family structure is not so well grounded, you haven't been fortunate to have family around you who's you, helped you understand morals you're do and helped something you understand on the foundation side and what's good. You make a plan until you realize that that plan is not what but, you should But that's be. interesting because oh, you, be. you also, uh, a Baha'i, I'm an Iranian uh, South African, which means your family migrated. Yeah, my parents here. were immigrants here. Uh, they migrated here to come and create. A, uh, I know your love. Wafa cousin, so you guys have like a bit of a community. Yes. Why do you feel like I don't feel like South Africans do that? Or like we go to like an American, we have like a young Zone Five Nyana in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I mean, I'll, I'll get into maybe why our parents, even Wafa's parents, why our parents came to somewhere like South Africa, mm. right? Um, don't forget uh, your point. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, don't, so don't where were we going? Point. Rewind. Don't forget your, you before we get to, to before we get you mm -hmm. went to oh like, I went to Greece. Okay. So yes. yeah, the reason why service. is because Greece is the door to Europe for refugees. Yes. So refugees coming from Afghanistan, Iran, Pakistan, Nigeria. <laughs> they go through Greece. <laughs> You're right. So what happened is I volunteered for this NGO called Doctors of the World. I had nothing to do with medicine, dentistry. I didn't know anything. I was like, this is just a good place to volunteer. 
In South Africa at that time, when I was yeah. when I matriculated, it was like 2004, 2005. Yeah. To my knowledge, yeah. okay. that's before. Yo, yeah, wait, guys, before I'm 57. I'm not that old. Just relax. What did you do? Yeah. So what's the yeah. problem? It's these ones, these cool cool. What do you, you mean? You the youngest. I had a throat mask. So the point. So the that point is, is like in South Africa at that time. Wait. We didn't really, we're not really familiar in South Africa with the concept of refugees, especially at that time. Yeah. Now we are more familiar with it, especially because of what's happened in the hardships in Zim. Yeah. But at that time, not so familiar with it. Yeah. We're very familiar with disparities, extremes of wealth and poverty, yeah. um, uh, socioeconomic divides. We're yeah. very familiar with that here, right? Yeah. Um, injustices. Mm. But not as a result of like, okay, I've fled my country as a prisoner of war. I don't have any way to... We haven't really had that. Yeah, no, I would say that within yeah. South Africa, within our own borders, many of our black people were refugees within their own country mm. because they were mm. taken away from. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which is a crazy thing to yeah. think about. But I wasn't exposed to any of that concept of world concept of refugees. Mm. I not understood it. Yeah. And so it was a good idea to get exposed to the realities of the rest of the world. So basically, I spent that year volunteering for doctors, psychologists, psychiatrists, social workers, just helping, just helping these prisoners of war and victims. And, and what would you be doing? I would be helping in surgeries. Mm. I would be, funnily enough, because I was Persian, and even though my, my Farsi in terms of language is not amazing because I, I was born and bred here, I've never been to Iran and I can't yeah. yet go to Iran at the moment. I knew Farsi. And of the Iranian and Afghani refugees, that's what they spoke. They didn't speak Greek. They didn't speak English. So they mm. asked me to try to help translate. Okay. So suddenly yeah, I got yeah, in this yeah. place where I was translating and I was obviously teaching myself a lot more of the language for like families who are like, the father's like, we, we had to escape in the middle of the night. My wife mm -hmm. was uh, raped. This happened to my children. We don't have any way. We haven't eaten in this time. We don't know this. I had to translate these stories as a 17, 18 year old. Right? So it's very like, it opens your eyes a lot. We yeah. would do things where 2, 3 a.m. We'd go in a little like mobile truck clinic into the city center. And then all the drug addicts and prostitutes who were, that was their time of night, would come to the truck to do needle exchanges. Mm. So obviously, if you're trying to curb infection, mm. a lot of addicts share needles. Sure, yeah. And it contributes to big widespread infection, yeah, big yeah. medical costs. So one thing we do is change for clean needles and take the old ones. But I always remember like there was this guy, this addict walking into the truck and the truck is small and he's carrying his needles like this and he's shaking. I was like, oh my God, if this guy just falls and falls into me, those needles then it's a whole me, story, yeah. right? Yeah, sure. But these were realities that I saw. Yes. And so all that happened was I threw myself into a space where I was doing things to help others whose lives were a lot harder than mine. And so it puts your life into context. Mm. And so when you're now trying to choose something to do, more my parents said to me is try to figure out what your talents are mm -hmm. and figure out how you can best serve humanity. And that's what you should Put go and that do. that together. So I think we had to apply. I studied at Vits. We had to apply by like August or something. Mm. By like mid-July, I still didn't know what I was going to do. Nothing. And then I met this one dentist there. She was really positive. Like oh, I think a week. Hey. All right. hey. Hey. My aunt's dentist. She said smile. You said cheese. <laughs> and now popcorn. I love and a man with great teeth. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, mean too I think my aunt had gone for an appointment mm. and she was saying to the dentist, she's like, oh, my nephew's trying to figure out what he should study. He likes business. He likes art. Maybe think of going to architecture or medicine or design or market. I don't know, whatever. A million things I wanted to do, mm. right? And then just like, what are you good at? And I was like, look, all I know that I'm good at is that I'm good with making things. I'm good with detail. I'm good with my hands. I always used to make stuff since childhood. Yeah. Because my parents didn't just buy me the toy that I wanted or buy me the shoe that I wanted. Legs, le Lego. Did you make Legos? I'm, I'm sure I did. Which I one is this one? Wood, but I made lots of things. Oh, oh they right? gave it, like they said. <laughs> they would say, you want that toy? Go into the garden. There's wood. There's this. Go figure it out. Huh. You want this thing? You have to figure it out. They didn't just buy it for me. Especially because we're living in a country that has yeah. so much extremes of wealth and poverty. Mm. If oh. I wanted a t-shirt, a Nike t-shirt, they said, you can't buy a t-shirt for 250 rand when Mang Mang down the road there or that person that you know hasn't had food yesterday. You can't do that. Mm. It's not, mm. it's not fair. Mm. So then so they'd get me a 10 rand t-shirt. Then you would have and to And then they print. say, here's some paint, make a plan. And then 
So what I started doing, I started copying, but I was good at copying. Make Nike, Reebok, yeah. <laughs> 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 cotton face. I had like every t-shirt now. I get to school, I'm rocking. Any t-shirt, all 10 friends that I like. <laughs> for like one shirt, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nike, Adidas, Reebok, one t-shirt. <laughs> but the point is I started like this, and so I knew that I could make things. Mm. I knew that I could make a plan and figure it out. And this has just developed, and, and now I'm doing the same thing in my life, just with different materials and in different ways. Yeah. But anyway, they did that. And so I knew I was good with my hands. Yeah. So the dentist is like, well, why don't you try dentistry? Because you need to be really good with your hands for dentistry. Mm -hmm. And I knew I obviously wanted to help people. And so you can help lots of people with dentistry. Mm, so it's both. So I was like, okay, it's not bad. It's a good idea. I don't know any problem with dentists. That's literally the most that I knew. <clears throat> and then I applied and then it began. Like the journey began. When I got into the degree, being, I don't know, this person that I was and what I was good at, and let's say the people person, and having an element, I think, from the Baha'i faith of the importance of doing this for the betterment of others, not yeah. just for self-betterment, um, is is the motivation is a bit different. Mm. And I started seeing, like every year, I started getting top. I got top in my class, top in my class, top in my class, top in my Because yes, I worked hard and I pushed, but I was also good at it, you know? Mm. And then when we started actually treating patients, real patients, you only start in third year. Because the first two years you're practicing on like plastic teeth and yeah, plastic can't be dummies. Yeah, making mistakes on real people. Exactly, mm -hmm. right? Um, when I started doing that, I started realizing how important being, let's say, a people's person and being able to connect with people is mm -hmm. within this profession also. So that just developed and developed and I saw why I was good and why I was different and how I could do it different and all my background of enjoyment in marketing and advertising and art and this and that allowed me to think a bit differently do things a bit differently. And it obviously is a long story, but it has evolved into what it is today. Sure. Oh, that's an you, amazing Have you never journey. ever like thought of being a doctor? Yes, I did. I mean, obviously when you're applying, you're like, okay, well like, maybe I want to be a plastic surgeon. Mm. May, because I'm sure it could be the same type of Satisfaction. And with yeah. your creativity, now how many BBLs are you? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so many degrees. <laughs> what was the first thing you thought BBL? But oh. the point is, the point is that, <laughs> that with a lot of effort and with a lot of prayer and a lot of questioning, that wasn't my path. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, maybe I was not cut out for that. My wife is currently a finally a medical student. She has to work crazy hard. And I'm so proud of her, but I'm like, hey, like, I'm sure I could work that hard, but that's crazy. Hey, I'm, ha I'm very happy being a dentist mm -hmm. within this reality. She has to be working at Barrett till two in the morning as a student and then come back in the middle of the night and then go back by seven in the morning again. And, and know, this and that. Real, I was like, ah, People ah, come ah, in with ah. the panga here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so that wasn't my path. My and path. Go -to. My path. <laughs> what are you for a call to removal? And the panga on your head. No, it's fine. <laughs> Don't worry. It's my wife. <laughs> we argue like this. She's passionate, as they say. <laughs> Why did so, you say that it's the list? I think that's one thing for people to trust. If you make a lot of effort in something yeah. and you're questioning and trying and praying and then a path gets almost carved out for you, yeah. you've got to be okay to go in there. Mm. And you see it develop and be like, yeah, I, I look back now, I'm like, yeah, damn right, I should have been this dentist. This oh, works well. Oh, yeah. Like it's a great combination of my interests Very well. yes. that serves. But at the time and, you didn't see it, right? No, you didn't know. Yeah. You didn't know that. At the end of my first year, even though I got top in my year, Someone was speaking to me at the end of the year, like family friend. And they're like, so what did you end up studying? You've always wanted, been speaking about this for so long and you're such a creative person. And what did you do? I'm like, dentistry. And they were like, they're like, ah, 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 <laughs> Dentist. ah, ah. And this was a film director from the States. He's like, we needed you in the creative space. You should have done this. I'm changing my accent to try yeah, to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I started crying. Oh. I'm like, oh, I've chosen the wrong thing. Why did I go into dentistry? I should have gone into a... I Why realized... Why do you like Danny K? Ah, ah, no. First of all, first of all, shout out Danny, I love you, boy. Danny's my patient. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, uh, whose teeth haven't you... <laughs> yours, just yeah. yours. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> We are waiting. I know. <laughs> it's okay, so, eh? so I was really distraught. I was like, I've chosen the wrong thing. I've gone into a conventional career. Mm. This is not, but it's not like that. Yeah. You've got to trust all your effort and you're going to make it what you're going to make it. If you're creative, you're going to change things. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so. And you really made it, eh? So things are, I'm making it. It's a process, right? Like, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a process. You've, you've, you've revolutionized what 
dentistry is for us, right? Because if you think about it, Lex, Thank you. no one looks forward to going to see the dentist. Mm-hmm. They don't. No, so. your dentistry is one of those professions where nobody looks forward to coming to see. It's not a happy appointment. It's not a yeah, no, because because everyone associates dentistry with pain and this and that. Yeah. But you look forward to going to see Lex. Thank you. You dress up to go and see Lex. <laughs> Dog, well, there's a picture. <laughs> there's a picture, bro. Hey. A picture. <laughs> and people think you can just go for the picture. No, Chief. It's not a photo put that thing. It's an actual consultation. And My patients talk. look like that so good after they complete the appointment study, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, because there's a during the process you don't see while we were <laughs> while we are constructing. Good. We come for the last picture. The prepared. Thing, mm. Tizi, that question that you had earlier. Oh no! Yeah, I was gonna say like, like how like obviously everybody moved to your parents yeah, and, yeah. and 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 Vafa's parents. A lot of uh, people yes, from yes, yes, yes. I- 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 Iran, Iran yeah. right? Were they also running under like war situations? Yes. So and you mentioned something about not being able to go. Right. So mm. so the reality in Iran at the moment, and Iran has gone through a lot of turbulence. And mm. is going through a lot of difficulties still up to today, right? Yeah. yeah. The Baha'i religion started in Persia, which is now today known as Iran. Uh-huh. Okay. That's why we say about Persian, right? Uh, it started in Persia in 1844. So 180 years ago. Is that correct? No, me and you. Yeah, yeah. 180 years ago. Okay. You're welcome. Um, and the reality with the Baha'i faith is that its teachings are saying that there's only one God. Whether you say God, whatever you want to say, the universe, an energy, however you choose to say it. It's God. Baha'is are saying there's only one creator. Mm-hmm. Whatever you choose to say. And that all the religions that we know, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Judaism, the Baha'i faith, uh, Hinduism, etc., etc., are all in fact from the same one God and are all trying to get humanity to the same end goal. Uh-huh. which is to know and love each other and get closer to God, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So the Baha'i faith is teaching this. Uh, it says men and women are equal. All races have always been. Actually, there's not all races. There's one race, human race, right? Uh-huh. All of humanity has always been equal. Mm. Uh, men and women have always been equal. If we don't realize this, it's always been factual. So Baha'i faith is teaching this, right? This is like the, the main premise of the principles, mm. unity the and foundation. Like so now this new religion <laughs> comes and with every faith, for every religion that comes to the world, there's always resistance. Yeah. Even Christianity. Majority of your listeners would be Christian. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the first 300 years, all Christians were persecuted. Mm-hmm. Right? It wasn't accepted. It wasn't widespread. It wasn't… People are like, what is this, bro? And about this life. Mm-hmm. Right? What do you mean you can walk on water? Mm, I know. I know. Yeah. Uh, 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 but when you change water into wine, you accept it. Yeah, yeah obvious. Uh, hey, where is this Jesus guy? He's got a 21st. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so yeah. my understanding yeah, is that all these religions face a lot of like resistance and turbulence and turmoil in the beginning. Yeah. Right? Um, and now it is the Baha'i faith's beginning. So what that means is that like Baha'i is right in the beginning and uh, like the inception of the religion were killed, martyred, persecuted in Iran. And that still continues up to today. A lot of the Baha'is, like my grandparents, they were kicked out of university for being Baha'i. Um, they didn't get to do what they wanted. Their bank accounts were taken. Their land was taken. They were kicked out of the country. All right? This is a, this is a reality for many of our grandparents' generation. Mm. Many of our parents, right, um, also had to leave in the late 70s, early 80s because of the revolution, which Uh then persecuted a lot of Baha'is also. Iran went through a lot. Um, And at the moment, the reality for Baha'is in Iran is that you you don't have human rights. The youth Mm -hmm. can't go to university. You can't just get jobs. Till today. Yeah, just because of being Baha'i. Till now, till today, right? How Um, do they know you're Baha'i? They know. I don't know how they know. They know. Well, I mean, look… When is you, it, yeah, like is there a certain way of dressing? There's certain yeah. no, 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 there's no. So there's no, there's no physical or material um, representation of being. But a Baha'i. when you don't participate, because there's in the Islamic ways of the. I mean, even, I guess the point is when you're Baha'i, you do want you. You're happy to share that you're Baha'i. Yeah. You love it, you know. Mm. Oh, so, um, uh, and so proclaiming. you will be. Oh, you have to. You have to put like if you're going to university and you want to apply, they say what religion are you? You have to put the Baha'i because you're not gonna lie. Yeah. They say, Baha'i, okay, shop, sorry for you. Or whatever be the case, right? Oh. And they, they know. But the reality is that a lot of people were forced to leave 
And in that forcing to leave, a lot of Baha'is in other places around the world are like, we need to go to somewhere in the world that is going through the most difficulty so we can help. It's like a wish of Baha'is oh. to try to bring about unity and try to bring about peace and whatever they do. So you guys didn't choose like where can, like <clears throat> from, a, from a South African no, Zimbabwean context, parents, we'll, we'll choose like a, a first world country where like we'll no, move. No, our parents idea. came to South Africa in 84. This is like, think of the reality of apartheid yeah. in, in 84. Yeah. When my parents came, they lived in Mututlung, that side of Briz, in like Kasi. They didn't go yeah. and stay in the burps, right? Family was in Mahikeng. Um, between there and there and there and there. It's not like we're like, cool, let's go to, to Bryanston. Or it wasn't about that because they needed to go where they there was needed. problem and mm -hmm. turmoil where they could help, contribute, mm -hmm. be part of the fight towards unity, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. It does, does, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so, so they came <clears throat> here um, with that primary intention. Yeah. Of course, they worked and they this and they that. So all of us kids were born here, right? We've not been to... And this is why, I mean, it's interesting for us. I was the only Middle Eastern person in my school. No mm -hmm. Persian. People don't know Persian mm, in South yeah, Africa. Bafa was, you yeah. know, maybe... The game. Uh, if you're Portuguese, we know. Mm. If you're Italian, we know, right? Persian. But Persian. What am I in high school? I wasn't colored. I wasn't black. I wasn't white. I wasn't Portuguese. I was just a situation. I wasn't Indian. <laughs> you were Arab. I was Arab. <laughs> right? I wasn't Chinese. I wasn't. So you have that reality. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, it does, doesn't matter, right? But you're like you're a world citizen. You're human beings that we're yeah. global, beings, right? And the ladies, did they like you? Cause hey, different. Uh, I mean, they liked me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm married now. I don't talk about those things. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> back in the day, before marriage, <laughs> way, 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 way. BM. Before. Yeah. BM. I was all right. Four four yeah. Which one BM, fine? yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not like BE, BC. <laughs> so it's like um, there was that reality of growing up here. Yeah. Um, I was always more comfortable with my black and colored friends. I was always more comfortable. Why? I don't know. What can you say? Why? Because we're accepting. Because of whatever. You know, what is the reality? How do you say why? Right? I grew up with an understanding that this color, whatever it is, does not separate you. Yeah. Right? And to also be sensitized to the history of our country. Mm. So our parents very emphatically said to us, if you ever, even from primary school, if you ever have a choice to go and sit with a group of kids and they are separated, you go and sit with the black kids. You do not go and sit with the white kids. You don't do that because you have to be sensitive to the reality that you have a responsibility uh, sure. to break the, the stereotype mold. and break the mold. Uh, so it doesn't mean like, uh, like all the white kids are bad, all the black kids are good. It just means should there ever be a situation where they're separate, the choice. you go and you break that stereotype. Uh, that is your role. To help do that, or then it doesn't ever you, happen. Because you might be able to just bring those two groups together. Correct. You, you end up becoming gap. a bridge. Yeah. I end up becoming a bridge. And I was always that, even through university. Yeah. There were still always cliques. Black clique, white clique. There's mm. always cliques. It's funny, I was that in my school. And I was just always in the middle. Color. I never stuck with a clique. Mm. I was friends with everyone. Same. And then you end up being this pulled together mm. so that people can't like... People got to the point where when, they, when I was coming to that group, they're like, ah, no, we can't gossip now. Lex is coming. We can't talk about Mang Mang. Lex is coming. Yeah. We know he's behind. Eh? He always speaks, about, always speaks about kindness and no, it's not good to do this and everyone's equal and no, we can't do this. We can't do... You know, it's interesting. It's a very interesting reality when you think about how people are brought up. That's right? crazy. And I was just comfortable. I grew up spending a lot of my time with Baha'is and mm. a lot of the Baha'is in South Africa are black. They're not. Persian, right? I, I so we grew up knowing Fana, Kosa, Zulu prayers and songs That's and crazy. hymns and the familiarity is all there. But I can be anywhere. Me, I'm easy to be anywhere with any group of people, any socioeconomic class, any place, any this, any that. I'm easy with that. So I'm very grateful to my parents for making sure that we didn't feel we had to stay in a certain place mm. or something's too not good for us. Mm. Like, no, it's dangerous or it's not this or that. No, there was none of that. It's not like we go to Kasi with the, for the classes of the kids that I teach and like, be careful, it's dangerous. No, all those people are living there. Like, 
They have to live there. Go be with people. What does it make a yeah. difference to you? You're going to be fine. Yeah. You know, trusting God. It's like that type of reality. So would you say it, so it's, your, it's your Baha'i faith um, and being raised in the household that you were raised in that kind of kept you from like the pressures of growing up like in South Africa, right? Like The pressures you of what? Drinking. 100%. Uh, partying, taking drugs. Yeah, so 100% or, I, yes, in the Baha'i faith, you're not allowed to drink. <laughs> in the okay. Baha'i faith, you're not allowed have, you, to have, you had, have you ever had a, a shot with Vafa? No. In the Baha'i yeah. faith, you're not allowed to have sex before marriage. Well, first of all, that's in every religion. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But the point is, what? Hey. <laughs> hey. 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 Hold on. You hey. said hey. It is. It is. Oh, one thing I know in heaven, that line. Yeah. <laughs> That life. Oh, we're gonna be a lot. They're gonna be checking. They're gonna be checking. Like today, I was catching a flight from Cape Town. They're checking your passport. Like priority boarding or no? Go to that line. It's gonna be shocking when you see other people. They're like, oh, oh Desmond Tutu. Oh, boss. Nah, I'm in the lungs, <laughs> team. I like no shame. So there are these. There are these. Uh, there are these laws. All right? Yeah. That we know. What my parents taught me is that if you're going to choose the religion, you choose it. Do not do it for us. Mm, do not do it for someone else. Bars. Other than you and your belief in it and God, because that's the only thing that's going to help keep you. Because mm. if you're doing it for us, then when you're not with us, you're going to do whatever you want. Exactly. Yeah. Right? So they taught me that. And I saw the beauty of the Baha'i faith. And so I chose it. So no, I've never had alcohol. No, I've never taken drugs. And I didn't have sex before marriage. But no one believed that. This is the thing. Yeah. Me in, in like high school, university, especially university, I was at every party. I was out. I was there also the same VIP and dancing and doing this and Standard. on the couch. I just wasn't drunk. But people didn't understand why am I up till 4 a.m. and then I can be up at 9 the next morning teaching kids this and that uh, if I was not on drugs. Uh, well, how do you do that? Uh, well, I was like, firstly, guys, I don't have Babala, so it's not such a big deal for me to wake Please up. Please tell them. Yeah, no, so, <laughs> so, but oh. there was always rumors about me. I was having sex with every girl in university because I was this guy, I was talking to everyone, I was nice to everyone. I was like, no, boy. it wasn't the story. Man, right? where there's smoke, there's fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand. What are you doing with those girls that alluded to people saying that they're their homework. What? Ah! <laughs> Just checking if everything is fine in the mouth. <laughs> ah, <laughs> <laughs> giving them the teeth. Eh? Teeth to what? Eh? Which one is this one? <laughs> hey, man, have you ever been hit by a breath that you were like, wow, I wish I wasn't doing this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been problems. hit by a breath a lot. And I'm like, that's why I'm doing this. <laughs> so that I can help that person so that I don't have to do that with other people in public for someone who doesn't care, oh, for someone okay, who goes okay. and guys, nice sabas there behind their back. Lex is hard, guys. Yeah. So yeah. it's like that. So you're in a you're in a role for a reason. Yeah. You know? If you're gonna go and ridicule someone for something. So no one wants to have bad breath. This is the first thing. No one wants to. It's not like they choose, I want to have bad breath today. Wonderful. Either yeah, they happens. didn't have the opportunity to get healthcare when they were younger, mm -hmm. they weren't educated better, they've had problems that are too expensive uh, yeah. to fix and they have priorities in life. Uh -huh. Um they haven't been about around people who um, we're honest are honest yeah. or kind to them <laughs> like right so there's those realities uh. so when you look at the reality of like humanity like that through that mm. lens you know that you must help oh. you can't contribute to the okay. you're bad breath I, let me walk yeah. away let me not say anything I can't uh. like you don't want to do that yeah, no, me, I'm talking about like a smoke you know no, I've but okay. the oh, that's not even bad breath there's people who have like clinical yeah, bad so, like oh, clans. no, 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 those no but yeah so yeah. a lot of, yeah, I mean that's normal. So so with with regards to and I and I excuse me for going back to calling this thing a calling, bro, because I think in terms of dentistry, you you're one of the most gifted <laughs> dentists Thank you. I know globally, yeah. right? Thank globally, you. not just in South Africa. Thank you. How do you then right, you, you finish with school, <clears throat> you're top of your class. Mm. How does how does that then go forth into the career that you've built, right? How does how does the Dr. Smile brand come right, about? So how does yeah. uh, how do you then venture great, into it's a great story how Dr. Smile was born. Yeah. Dr. Smile was born in 2011. <clears throat> After World Cup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My, I was in my final year during World Cup. Um, um so 
dentistry, you study five years and then you have to do one year of community service. The bonus uh, question. For the oh. government, right? You are now… Yeah. <laughs> you are working. Yeah. You get a salary now for the first time. But you're working for government. Either in a government hospital or government clinic. Mm. Right? Is this where you went to work with the army? With Correct. The South so African... I went to the uh, SANDF. Right? Okay. So the I, army? Yeah. Mm. Salute. I was a captain. Can you believe it? Oh, I uh, love so I can believe it. It was dope, bro. I was dope. I was like, I'm a captain. I was a captain. But you get bestowed captain because if you come in there with that type of a degree, you go into captain. I was like, shop, I'll take it. Oh, same time. So what were you doing in the army, bro? So basically, Ah, you have to apply where you want to go for that one year. Yeah. Right? And you have to, you get a host of clinics and a whole list of 100 things around the country. You can go to any city, any country, any this, any that. Government clinic, big hospital, small and you were like, rural where can clinic. I now, with me, I obviously tried and worked very hard in, in my final year to, to be a good student. And thus, that could do good procedures. Because mm-hmm. in terms of dentistry, you get like very hectic, involved procedures. Like ceramic work and root canals and this and that. And then you get basic procedures which are basic fillings or to keep our minds in. Exactly, yeah. right? Mm. And it's like I didn't want to fall into a place where I had to go to a rural clinic that only has capacity for extractions. Oh, okay. Because some of my colleagues in my class they would go to clinics and all they could do every day was about 70 extractions. There was a line from morning to night for people who just needed to pull out teeth. Yeah. The facilities didn't even allow them to do fillings. They just could do extractions. No, so those areas didn't have much wisdom. So if you have any problem, they take it out. Which one is this one? <laughs> Shame. That's good. A, a real question. Ah, uh, when <laughs> That's undermined. <laughs> so if you have like anything wrong with your teeth, they'll take it out. Yeah. They, they weren't able to that's the township. do filling. Yeah, but that's what ninety percent of our country is used to. Mm. Hey, there's no, there's no the clean. Majority no of our country cleaning, don't actually no even fixing. know that you can fix a tooth if it's got a hole. Uh, they just say it's got a hole, pull it out. Right? That's the that's the harsh reality uh, of uh, Cape Town. Uh, uh, a de- uh, <laughs> a developing oh. healthcare. System yeah. and nation. It's a gang of dentists <laughs> just going against teeth. <laughs> Keep a muzzle in your operation. <laughs> like, so this yeah. is what happened. The birth of Dr. I was yeah. I was told by this guy who was in the year above me, who did really well and also got these same awards that I got, that if you apply to the army, the army has a really good budget. Mm. And so the army's healthcare facilities are much higher standard. Oh, yes. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, I'm going to work hard, bro, so I get these awards so that I can apply so I can get that commserve position. It's still love. It's right? still <laughs> <laughs> so in the army, whose teeth do you take out? So <laughs> it's not just about… So anyway, I, I applied and I got the Lady Smith Five Psy Military Base. Yeah. I had to be there from 1st of January. I was living with the soldiers, in the soldiers' raises, and, 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 and. And basically, I was on the base. And I was now the dentist responsible for 1,500 soldiers and their families. And their families. So I had a dental practice there on the yeah. base. And I was the dentist. And what's crazy is like the technology that the military had in terms of equipment was even better than I had at university. That's crazy. Like even the x-rays. It was the first time I used a digital x-ray was in the military. Because at that time we were doing those manual ones at Wits where you take the x-ray and you like, have you ever seen in a dark room and they're developing photos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. was still doing that. Like, yeah? And now I was using you. digital and things like that. And I was like, oh, wait. And I was doing great procedures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So throughout that whole year, my skills were getting up instead of not being able to develop them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was in that year that Dr. Smile developed. Why? Because on my weekends and free time, I would go to schools <laughs> around Ladysmith yeah, and KZN. Yeah. Which you still do. Which I still do. Shout and out. I'll do here's free… A, here's, a, here's a fist pump for you. I would, for that. I would do free oral healthcare education days. Oh, I'd take music. I would blast it. We would all dance together with the little kids. I'd teach them how to brush and this. And I'd give them free toothbrush and free toothpaste. And and, and. and that's how Dr. Smile started. Because I couldn't get there and be like, San Bonan, no, okay, this is Dr. Rohani. People are going to be like, Bani. 
Doctor Rohani. Yeah. Rohani, Rohani, Khawani, man. Not me, sure. It's gonna be that thing. So fucking someone. Ah, what's up? So I, I had to make sure. Never studio. It's just that he's not a doctor. So I had to make sure. Uh, uh, Which one is this one? So so uh, so I had to make sure. Yeah, I know. And I came up. I came up with the name Doctor Smile. Yeah. And so as soon as I came up with it, I contacted my dad, who I knew had knowledge. Like he he had met one of his friends was a trademark lawyer. Mm. So then I called straight to him. I was like, Dad, I need to trademark this name. What do I do? And then he said, okay, you have to call this person, you have to call this, you're going to have to pay this, you're going to do this, la, 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 all of this type of stuff. And then I did it. I did the trademark. And then, so I got the trademark in 2011 and the registered trademark happens after like two years. Mm-hmm. So by 2013, then I got the registered, you know, there's an R, mm-hmm. difference to TM, right? So that happened after, in like by 2013. Yeah. But a lot happened in that year. So Dr. Smile developed uh, Lex Leo uh, in terms of my music side only started in that year. I'd always loved music, yeah. but I never had time. And only in that year did I start teaching myself guitar. Then I was like, oh, I can do this type of thing. This is not bad. And I always loved hip hop since high school. So while you were on the bass, you were… Yeah, I obviously have free time most because now mm. in the evenings, you don't have to study. So what are you doing? Play, okay. I'm learning just play learning guitar, things. Yeah. Like all these things that I wanted to do for five years that I couldn't. Mm. Right? You see, this is what happens when you're sober your whole life. You're, you're bio. <laughs> you have time to do you that. Time to time to learn you're not sleeping. Exactly. Anyway, so I started teaching myself guitar and I was like, oh, yeah. I can do this. I can sing. Not bad. I'm not bad. You know? Yeah. And then uh, I loved hip hop, but I've always loved hip hop. At least since like, like, since if you think back to like the time of Nelly, Kelly, Chingy, the early 2000s. Ja- yeah, yeah, 2000s. Late 99, yeah. This no, was in Chingy. high school time, Yo. right? I know. Yeah, high school yeah. that time, I loved hip hop. So, and I was very yeah. hip hop in school from the break dancing. I was always the guy in school. I had like two carry mores. One was my books, one I, I used good. to sell stuff. So I'd sell like Tim's, I'd sell like velour tracksuits, I'd sell <laughs> caps, it was like that. Yeah, yeah. I had that, that vibe. I was always selling stuff because I also wanted cash and my parents didn't just give me cash. And then would you dance in circles at school? Like, was that your yeah, vibe? Yeah, we did that. We had ciphers, you had right, you had three boy. You had, it was like a, it was the vibe. Between skating and that, right? Yeah. It's all like interlinked. Did you do, did you guys like, were you guys in the same? Because I know Vafa was telling me that even Tejo, you know Tejo, the artist from, uh, yeah. from, um, Tree, Tree, Family Tree. Family Tree, used to be a Family oh, Tree. Yeah, Tejo. from Family Tree. Yeah, it's a whole oh, yeah. 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 well, well, that's Tsejo. King Mana Dance Fest. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The Billy's on me. The Billy, yes. Hennessy, Siro. Hennessy, Siro. Anyway, used to cipher with 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 you guys, right? Do you and those two cyphers? Vafa and Safa, so they're our cousins, and they so our families are all in Mahike. Right? Okay. All aunts, uncles, grandparents. My grandparents like OGs in my king, they've been there for like 45 or so years Jeez. at that time. So everyone was then gathered around. But we were based in Josie, our family. Oh. So we would always be in my king maybe two, three times a year. Mm. But they stayed there. So they went to Salt Plucky, but me, I went to school here. Oh. Right? Cool. Constantia Primary, just a normal school there up the road. We went to normal schools like government Model C's as opposed to… Mm. We didn't go to private Prior. schools. Mm. Um, so… We would always see each other and family and we back and forth there and, you know, first pair of shoes I remember buying that were like dope was from Mega City. When Mega City was small. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But my gang was also popping at that time. Yeah. It's very different to now. Yeah. Anyway, so we just like family like that and have that, um, yeah, yeah. those references. Wait, we were… We He's done. He was asking yeah. about Tejo. Yeah, yeah. Was about I thought, I, thought, I, thought, I, 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 I thought maybe the timeline for the music thing would have started back No, then. for me, look, for me, I started loving rap. I even got a track that is called, the track's called Ride. I released it in like 2019 and tells like my whole story and love for this. But I started rapping at 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like loving rap. Yeah. It was really from Eminem at that time. Yeah. So starting to listen and write down verses and see if you can rap on the beat. You can, I've always loved that. Right? Uh, rhythm and poetry, which yeah. is, is what it is. I've always enjoyed that. So that kind of continued. And like, if I think about it, that year of 2011, when I started, and then I was like, hey, you know, I, I want to do this thing. I want to be an artist. Um, I'm going to make a few little demos. 
Uh-huh. But who do I trust to tell me if I can or not? There was only one person at that time that I trusted. Junior. No, Junior wasn't yet Junior at that time. In oh, Junior. Because oh, okay. 2011, he wasn't nasty. On, nasty, nasty. And you, Junior. Nasty C. Nasty C. Oh, Nasty C. Wasn't, wasn't yet was in that Ricky. space, right? No. Even Ricky at that time wasn't, yeah, wasn't yeah, Ricky. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> rest in peace, Tibbs. Tibbs oh, at that time oh. had already started Show Love. We were friends throughout university. That's where he started Show Love at Vitz. Mm. The Show Love parties and this and that. And yes. then, Keenan, then he started managing <clears throat> Keenan and Keenan started blowing up. You know, that was that time while I was in university. And so I spoke to Tibbs and I'm like, bro, I want to do this. If you tell me I can't do it, then I'll trust. But listen yeah. to this demo. I want you to tell me, do you think I can sing? Do you think I can rap? Does it work? Does it have a place? And he listened and he said, no, you can't do it. You've got to be packaged like this and do this and do this. Uh, but you can't do it. So I was like, great. Now I want to be this artist. So then I came up with a name and I started learning. Okay, how do you even write a song? Now you must go to the studio. So how do you record Lex it? Lex Leo is that. Yeah, is Lex that, Leo is the music. Is artist. the music. Yeah. Dr. Smile is the Correct. dentist. That's why my handle on Insta is Lex Leo Dr. Dr. Smile. Mm-hmm. I made that. But basically I started that journey. And I was really enjoying it. Now I'm falling more into the music space of connecting with people and other artists and cool, let's go to the studio. I want to see how you do it and what do you do and what is this? And even like, uh, again, shout out to my bro, JR. He was one of the first mm. to help me. It's like, you know, try this, do this. This sounds good. Yeah, sounds yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Like a lot of support and help and love, you know? So I wanted to do all of that. And then I never ended up launching anything mm. because in 2013, I started my master's degree. So I went further to study because I started lecturing at WITS. And I didn't want to be a lecturer who wasn't pushing myself academically also. And then so I couldn't do both. Uh-huh. Then the music stopped. So only I only released my first single officially, which was titled Bafunu Oh, yeah. Where the, the music the video and this and that. Yeah, that, I love that video. That, so one, that video I love. Yeah. Shame. Yeah. I'm so glad I invested what, in that. Was one of those people say, hey, I've got, a cool, I've got a bad tooth. Can I be in your video? And then you they just... They were all my me. patients anyway already. Ah, so many years that's before. Yeah. Yeah. They were all, yeah. they were all my patients and friends already for years before. Okay. Yeah. But the point is, mm-hmm. I started that. And that's so 2018 is when I got to actually release my first single. With after the video. all those years. Yeah, next. after all of trying and Yo, wanting. That drone and shot and that. on top of that. Yeah, on top of Quanti. Yeah, I climbed up. On punt, it's hectic. You guys, if you guys haven't seen that, she's uh, she's gang. gang. Yeah. Please, not we're gonna we should really. play it actually. She's gang. Now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna please go and see that video. I that love that video. video. The direction is yeah, cool. but it's, it's nice, like yeah. even in terms of music, music for me because I've never been at a point where I can give music the the time it deserves. Uh-huh. Right, it deserves time. Like with dentistry, like with anything, you want to be good at it. You want to break. You want you can't just now release a song and you get a hit and then you you're doing music like. Half a day a week. It's not gonna work. You gotta mm. be in the studio. You gotta be making music. Yeah, you gotta try. You gotta exercise that Boxes muscle, etc. Yeah, yeah, right? Lex, you scared me the other day when we were chatting, and and I asked you. I, I can't remember how it came up in conversation, but you said. I might not be doing this for much longer, mm. and I was like, "We won't allow you, bro. <laughs> yeah, you can't leave us." Not. I don't know. You can't. Were you were you referring to the music? No dentistry. Talking? No dentistry. But I don't know yet. At the moment, I like to do many things and I don't know how it's going to evolve. Mm. And he, right? he, Lex is an evolver. And I'll tell you about, it doesn't mean I leave dentistry completely. It means I evolve <coughs> in dentistry. Mm. And how will I evolve? Hey. To Dr. But basically, Smart, to Professor Bishop's mind. <laughs> <laughs> the the music situation and I've 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 been grateful to release songs which I've really I really think are good. Yeah. It just sucks that people haven't heard them. I don't have a label to push it. They're not getting radio play because I'm not paying anyone. Song you made anyone. for your wife I'm is not quite this, dope. I'm not that. And it's like there's a certain cap that social media allows me to hit. Yeah. Like, okay, so I release it, I make the art, I enjoy it. I have really beautiful moments. I did a really nice track. Uh, that I did with Nasty, that we focused on mental health, that we performed at Cotton, Cotton Fest, Fest in memory of Ricky. That's a great moment for me that I got to do that, uh, right? Uh, um, I have a, a song that I wrote for my wife oh, that yeah, I performed that, that at our wedding, wedding. Mm. that I got to perform at Vitz 100 Year Concert in front of, I don't know, 10,000 people and I got to bring out on stage and perform that. I love that. I have this new song that I released now in September called She, which... I got contacted by a producer in New York, this Russian guy who's like, I heard that track with Nasty. I love that. Here's some beats. Do you like any of them? And out of the 10 he sent me, there was one that I loved. 
like this old J. Cole sounding slow. And I was like, I want that beat, please. Next love, J. Cole, bro. And then I wrote mm. this song. J. Cole's definitely my favorite. Then I wrote yeah. this track for my wife, present for her birthday. And so I'm, I'm doing mm. music as an art. Yeah. It's a creative art. I'd love to have <laughs> perform in a stadium like this guy. I'd love yeah. to. Fine, I've had big crowds, but I'd love to do it when people actually know my song. It's different. You know, when you, when you go on there and mm. you can't hold the mic because they don't know your song, you've got to perform the hell out of that song for people to feel your energy must, and vibe yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah. mm. So I know I can do that and I've you. done that. But yeah, of course I'd love to have a song where people are singing along and I'm just… But it's not that. It's not at that point. I know. How, how long yeah. do you, how long do you feel like it's going to take you to get to the capacity of doing everything you want to do? Yes, because because over and above the 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 Time skateboarding, management. over and above the artistry and dentistry, over over and above the the music, we still have the jewelry making. Yeah, so right? the jewelry is really dope. It's something that I've really been enjoying. It's officially like, Dango. I. Oh, it also a customer there. Hey, when I'm not so very bored, you pair two. This man is buying the music. He's yeah. buying the jewelry. He's buying the teeth. Toothbrush. Guys, let me tell me to take out three of my wisdom teeth at once, bruh. It's gonna help you. Thanks, Lex. It's gonna help you. And it, it, it did. Look at this one. So perfect. <laughs> please, please, in the in the in the edit of that, please add a ding ding. <laughs> Must. Yeah. So, um, what were we saying? The jewelry, bro. Oh, the jewelry. The jewelry. Because also is your a... grills are. That's the first thing you... we noticed today. Those are like. Zoom those in. are those are uh, international rap star level. These are the first digitally made grills on the continent. You know, digital. Say, yeah, because I do a lot of digital dentistry. Yeah. Right. So when you're doing things, designing them, 3D printing them, then changing them to gold and diamonds, things become super neat, super precise. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I'm always trying to like advance where South Africa is in terms of its standards, trying to get us closer to international standards, hmm. whether it's dentistry, whether it's jewelry, whatever, right? Like, apparently, your Vestas chain is the first spinning one in Africa for the his, size that you. His did. definitely was the first spinning one. So, you, you made Casper's chain as well? Yeah. Like so, the unit one. So, Trust I me, made Casper's first, first, Casper oh, first started with a gold one. That the gold the one that he was wearing like the Tito Mboweni video. Mm -hmm. yeah. That first one. Um, and then his second one was a combination of being made here and in Dubai. It was mm -hmm. a, a dual job because we have limitations with what we can do here with the type of technology. Right? And then I've done his latest Biliato chain. Yeah. You've seen his movie. Yeah. But I had done a ring, a spinning, if I think about spinning stuff, I, I don't know if we did Casper's chain first or nasty spinning ring. I can't remember which one was first. Ah, oh, it was the ring because of the diamond and during the but, Sun period. But there's a there's a like a, a really it's fun. Jewelry like creation is fun. Custom pieces, right? You can't go and buy a robot pendant with rubies and sapphires and emeralds. You're not gonna you can't find it in the shop. You, you have to create it. Mm, rubies. Right? Rubies and sapphires. And yo. emeralds. Don't forget. Yeah, the and emeralds. Yo, yo. When I like Wizard of Oz, Papa. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so how does that come about, so, bro? Like, so did I, you study this so, thing? No, I didn't study it. I was just you were just I was melting minerals at making at things. <laughs> Not yet. So, <laughs> just, <laughs> so this is how it worked. Like I again, as I said, I always used to make things. Yeah. Right. So I always used to make things from wire or wood. I did while I was in university because I didn't have much money in university. I had to start things and make things to sell. Mm. So I started making jewelry and accessories from leather. Because mm. I didn't need special materials. I'll buy the leather, I get this thing, I sew this thing, I can do that type of stuff. So I started, and like the story advances, I used to work in retail. Like I'd work in like gifts and diesel and these things so, when I was yeah. in university, extra money and this and that. And when the first iPod came out, mm. I, won, I won it in a competition. Right. Mm -hmm. I never again I could never buy these things, but I made a plan and I Watch, wanted to I did yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. So I won this iPod and then I made a cover for it, like a leather cover. Mm -hmm. I was then working in Diesel in Santon, I remember. And this one customer walked in and he's like, What's that thing around your neck? I was like, Oh, I made a cover. And he's like, I own the Apple store in, in South Africa. <laughs> it's uh, before we had all the iStores. He's like, I'm the owner. I would like those in the store for my iPods. I was like, Dango. 
opportunity meets the jobs, right? No, Steve not Steve Jobs. Jobs. South Africa. Sisi mar. Ulo una Apple Store. Kema ho una Apple Store. Okay, Steven. so. Okay, Steven. Steven Musebi. Steve. So basically, Steve-o. what happened is he's like, I want to try these. You you can put in a nice display, and I had like a display at age 18, 19 in the only Apple store that we had in the country at that time, right? Yes. How many lives? I was like, this live. is dope, right? I have a photo, I have a photo. I'm going to send it to you and upload it onto this thing where I'm like, Kling, look at my display in the shop, right? What? But basically, I was making these things. This is before iPhone came out. Yeah. I'm making these things. Then the first iPhone came out. I made the cover for that. Then the next one came out. I made the cover. And we would sell them in store. I'd get 50%. They'd keep 50%. Yeah. I was very happy. I was happy. How much money did you make? Uh, you can disclose. Look, at the point in, in university, <laughs> in university at that time, per month I was working on a 2200 rand budget for my transport and my food, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. And that was taxi fare and I could maybe get like a Chelsea bun and a milk uh-huh. for like Standard. food. It was like that. Oh, I wasn't getting like Chelsea bun. Yeah, that was it. That kept me going, you know. It's yeah. not good for your teeth, but it's it was what it was. And you could fix it. Right. I mean, Now, on. if I sold one cover, I would make, I'd sell it for like 6,000 or whatever it is. We were selling it 5,000, 6,000. So I'd get already two, 3,000 extra. Yeah. Right? Which was a lot. It was like double, double my budget. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that was great. If you say 2,000 now, we fill one tank of petrol, you're yeah. already sitting one six. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So at that and time, it was obviously very pain. different. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But but it was great. Because I realized now, okay, I don't need to work in retail and get like 12 rand an hour. Um, I'm going to go home and sit and make things. And then, I must get them sold. Yeah. And then, so that started happening. And so I started working with leathers. Then I started making like sandals. And then I started making like rings and cuffs and this and that and what, what, what. So that's where the jewelry started. To put it on your hand. Then what happened is, how did I get into like gold and diamond space? Mm-hmm. Only from when I started doing grills. So the first girl's idea in the country came from Scoop. Scoop Makatin, came to me. Yeah. Scoop, Makatin, Scoop yes. was one of my patients. And he came Pioneer, to me. And he's great. like, he's like, dog, can you make grills? And I was like, I don't know. I'm sure I can figure it out. It's not like they teach you in university. Mm. Right? But I was like, I know how to make, I know teeth. Mm. And I know these materials. And I know how to make a retainer. And I know this is just an expensive retainer. Yeah. So give me a while. I'm going to figure it out. So I made two for myself. Test them, fit them, are they good? Just from like a chrome cobalt material. No real gold because I didn't have access to real gold. I didn't even know at that time. Where do you, you buy gold? gold. Yeah. Right? Cash cruise. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> Cash for gold. Eh? So, so I started doing those. And then, so I figured it out, figured it out. And then, aka Rest in Peace came with like the first we started doing grills for him. Mm. So I made his first grill. Then we went with the double set. And then we went with the, this one and then that one. Yeah. And then Cool Cat okay, was the cool first cat. one to do real gold. Oh. Hey. So everyone hey, else at that time, also, you guys know, like in your come up and this and that, you don't have, I don't know, Cool Cat had money, had money. It was different. And he was always a trendsetter. He was always doing things different. Cool Cat was making international money. He was always the first. At that time, yeah. think when he, when he, when he dropped, now nah? he was he was heavy, yeah. heavy, heavy, heavy. Mm. So he came and then he did the first solid gold one. And then from that time, so I managed to figure it out. So obviously in dentistry you can use gold, yeah. But it's about how do you source it and where do you get it from and who has a gold license and this and that. So either way, we um, made that for him. And then what started happening was then someone came to me. Then I think it started with like Nasty. Because Nasty was the first one I did jewelry for. Uh-huh. Did some girls and he was like, oh, can you make me a chain? And I was like, I'm sure I can figure it out. Then he comes with like, can you make me a ring? I'm sure I can figure it out. And up to today, me and Nasty have that type of a conversation. Figuring I'm going to figure out. it out. We're going to figure oh, this yeah. out. We'll figure that out. And so I'm now in my sixth year, almost seventh year of making custom jewelry. And I'm getting better and better and better and better. And I'm doing things that we just don't do in South Africa. We're still behind where the States is, Didn't course. you do like a championship ring for… Yeah, for Sia. For Sia Colise. Yeah. yeah. So I've got really oh. cool pieces. People must go and follow Shori Custom Made and see like everything that I've made. Yeah. But it's a really interesting space. And it's sentimental things. And you make like memories for people and moments. And 
um, things which people hold on to and either give them happiness or confidence or console them <clears> if their loved one has passed away yeah. or something. Mm. So this is why jewelry is is a really dope space for that. Bro, too. and talking about making things, right? You've you've made many things out of leather and 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 gold. You have Everybody now knows. made a toothbrush. I have finally made it. Fine, yes. Electric. Finally. Be, like after... Sure. I've been wanting to do it for about six years. Uh-huh. I've not known how to do it. Mm. Um, Did you also figure this out? Did you? I figured it out, but it's, a, it's an opportunity. <laughs> Two cables thing. and a pet. I was yeah, speaking. Yeah, yeah. I had been speaking to one person who had had products out for many years. Not dentistry products, but just products in shops. Yeah. I was like, how do you start this? How do you get it onto that shelf? Who do you speak to? How do you know this? How do you know that? La, 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 la. Retail space is very different. Correct. Yeah. Information. Eventually, it got to the point where they had called me about a year and a half to two years ago and said, we've got approached by this one big chain. They need a toothbrush. And you are the only person who should do it. And you've been telling me for this many years you wanted to do it. And now is our time. So shout out to that person. Mm-hmm. Shout out person. Shout out person. person. Even why we're we not telling their name? Because, because we don't person. want to say Sol Kersner, Raf Raf and Jay. <laughs> I don't know how much they want people to know that they're my partners. Yeah. So there's certain partnership city. Anyway, so we got to a point oh. where I then spent about a year designing developing Mm -hmm. materials, understanding what needs to go into the brush. What I don't like about other electric brushes on the market, um, making this thing dope from the handle to the size, to the feel, to the shape, to the the color, to putting my picture on the back, to to the functionality, obviously, functionality (laughs) is vital. And then what I'm so proud about of our brand other than it being the first South African RLK brand, which is a big deal, because yeah, we only yeah, know yeah. Philips and RLB and this and that, mm. which are companies we yeah. started. Yeah, I know. I yeah. Sango. Yeah. It really is. It's a big deal for us. Oh. It's a big deal for us because mm. the companies that we have electric brushes from started in the 70s and 80s, mm. right? Like Philips's first electric toothbrush came out in 1992. RLB came out in 1989. Yeah. Right, so uh, that's thirty years ago already. Yeah. Now I'm I'm only I'm coming out now. I have so like such a far journey, mm-hmm. and I've got such a great product as version one. Sure. Mm-hmm. And what we're so happy about is that we've done something that for every brush sold, every electric brush sold, or every manual brush sold, because I've got manual toothbrushes coming out in the next month and a half. Mm-hmm. Any brush that is sold of my brand, I give away one manual brush for free to someone in need. I love that. So this is really important. Ah. Dr. Smile, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, hallelujah. Always helping out from music to ears to putting a smile on people's faces. As we are putting a smile on your faces here at Streaming Studios. Streaming Studios at the corner of Parkest, secret location. Mpopops. We are here with uh, Dr. Smile, Smile Sonic. It doesn't matter where you are. You could fix your teeth this quickly. Like (laughs) Sonic, the hedgehog. Smile Sonic. The one brush to use when you're brushing all your teeth. <laughs> Smile Sonic doesn't, doesn't hate on the color of the teeth, whether your teeth are any color. Yeah. It's, it's Smile the, Sonic. Okay. Fix, okay. <laughs> Back to you, Dr. Smile. So what I was saying was, okay. I'm obviously planning to release a, a whole RLK range. Yes. Mm. So electric toothbrush, <laughs> manual toothbrush, pediatric range, toothpaste, Mm. Floss. These things will all be coming out. What flavors are you going to have? The floss is pink. Yeah, must have like a mohodu. I'm trying to do something that we feel more at home with. Yes. Yes. Not mohodu. Guava. Guava. Chakalak. Dr. Smile, chakalaka flavor toothpaste. It will not. It will not. Mm. I'm going to do a, I'm gonna do a partnership with Pilchards. Like it's that. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yo. Imagine. And, and a Pilchard smell can last in your, in your breath. Yeah. That means if you make it fresh, <laughs> it will last even longer. Think about it. Yo, can Come I on. Grab the, can I grab the yeah, box? when you do that, just add me 5% yeah. there. Okay. So, wh- like, what is, what is important? So, the, How the, much is this thing? 1,400. You! So this is 1,400. So my competition, by the way, this is important to understand. My, yeah, com- yeah, yeah, yeah. my competition for this level of brush is yeah. selling at 2,500 to 3,000. Yeah. yeah I so think- this is important. There are electric brushes that sell for 200 rand. They're not four modes with this type of functionality, this type of mm. bristle, this type of charge. The battery life lasts three weeks. 
It's USB charging. It's got specialized bristles for deep and surface cleaning. It's got four mm -hmm. modes for your tongue and the inside of your teeth and the outside oh, guard. Let's read out the, yeah. the modes. Yeah, this one Advanced is sonic technology. Four times weeks. Like, eh? King, eh? Which one is this one? Oh. Mm. Mm. Sibu King. Sibu King. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, not Sibu King. King. Sibu King. Four plus it's weeks. Funny, Love and country. I, Remove surface I bought stains. my Oral B mm. on Please special. Between two triple nine. And that was on special. Your toothbrush is... There are some there are some toothbrushes. Hey, whoa, whoa, my new okay, my new one is one four. His new one. Wait, wait, listen, also, listen, guys, see, see. for every oh, one of these sold, there's another bigger <laughs> purpose to it. So every, look. <laughs> see, see, there are some electric brushes selling for eight thousand. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, so no, the point no, is for this functionality, this is not expensive. No, no, of course. But what I'm doing is I'm I'm like I said, I'm bringing out the manual toothbrushes. I'm gonna sell those for under 50 Rand, maybe 40 Rand, under 50 yeah. Rand, something. Mm. They are biodegradable plastics. They are specialized bristles. They are really good. Mm. They will be coming out soon and hopefully everyone can get those. But as I said, whether I'm selling a manual brush or an electric brush, I'm giving away one for free for every brush sold. Yeah. Mm. And that I is important because when I do and I go out to schools and communities and I do oral health education mm. and I do um, uh, teaching on how to brush, how to floss, and I'm giving out products, I'm giving out our own brand mm -hmm. because of the Dr. Smile Oral Care family and their purchases. This is really important. Yeah. So, and it's a big part of the brand. Mm. I love that. I love that. No, There's... I want one of these, but I just want to know. So, you oh, know how I pressure for Tratao. <laughs> <laughs> bro, bro, this this, we have to this is a journey, man. This this is also like also like, and I don't know the cheese gang maybe haven't noticed over the weeks, but I also have invisible braces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've right. This is why I haven't been eating the popcorn over the past couple mm -hmm. of. So pops's months. journey, he's been going from getting his mouth super like you start with getting it super healthy. Yes, you learn how to brush, how to floss, how to maintain. Then everything that in your mouth needs work, yeah. you start fixing. Yeah. So that things look good, feel good, work well. Yes. And then you start getting to a point where you say, now that everything is healthy and I know how to look after it and it's working well, let me get things looking the way I want. Then you can get and the And then grills. you start that journey. Uh, you see when so we see, see with, this. Uh, I said like, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. hey, you, you will take out the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a proper, like an invisible braces that sits there. Oh, that's dope. And, it's, and it's, it's hectic, bro, because my teeth were actually sitting like this. Right? And not your your top teeth are supposed to come a little bit over your front mm -hmm. teeth. And if you look at like my dad and my older <clears> brother, <throat> we have this thing where our teeth get smaller really over the it. years mm. because our teeth. Oh, so so I was like, Which sometimes I thought you had more teeth than the normal person. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Smile, please tell us. Ne? Shock. I mean, I've Why? Because his smile is white. Look. It's a nice it smile. It's a, a white smile. It's the, what a comedian needs. Thank you. Ah, Thank okay. you. So, real quick, real <laughs> quick, uh, Lex, where can people get this? I love the, I love the, I love the, 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 what do you call it? The engine behind the brand, right? Mm. Um, there was a popular shoe company. I can't remember if it was Tom's. Tom's. The Tom's. Tom's. Yes. Where That's where I got the concept. Yeah, from. where you'd buy a pair and they'd make sure that someone else gets a pair of shoes. Yeah, I love that. And it. they, in the billions now, right? So we're going to get this to the billions, but it starts with knowing it where can we with, get so this. So the, the brand is exclusively available at this camp. Okay. okay. So unless you're one of my patients and you're seeing me at my clinic, which you can get stuff, any discam around the country. Any discam in South Africa, make sure you get yourself a Smile Sonic brush for only $1,399.99. I want to say something. This is, sorry, this is an important thing. Should a family want to get this brush, mm -hmm. you don't, like, it is expensive relative to normal toothbrushes, you can get one Smile Sonic and you can get two packs of replacement heads, which means you have five different heads that clip onto the motor mm. and that can be shared. It's oh. almost like a camera's <laughs> right? doctor smile. I don't like want a, people to feel like they can't lenses. get yeah, something like this if they want to yeah, share it. And then should you not be able to get electric, you'll get one of the manual ones and they're also really good. Hey, this man's got a big heart, bro. Yeah. Dog. Yeah. Most people will be like, hey, if there's five of you, buy five. Yeah. Dr. Mm -hmm. Smell's yeah. like, guys, listen, you know, just yeah. get five contraptions, it plug it in. Yeah. It's not. Let it rock. Definitely not. Oh, no, man. Guys, but this, is, this has been a cool one. We must do another one. Yo, Lex, yeah. bro. Like, Lex has so much fun. Honestly, one. we, I feel How like. How long we, have we been talking for? For an hour and a half. No. We have to cut. Yeah. yeah. We have to edit. He's hitting me at that, the back. That's why the vendor man in the striped shirt. Oh, kicks. 
Yeah. What are we talking about? Oh no 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 the kicks. No everybody stays correct here. Yeah. The kicks we'll we'll talk about in the second second thingy. But I think one thing I'm gonna share with everyone as the episodes go by, and maybe this is where we can have you back again, is I wanna share um my journey. So I'm gonna share the the pictures and the Lovely, images yeah. to show to show what you've done, right? Because one of the things that's completely blown me away is watching what you've done. So if you if you follow Lex, if you follow yeah, Lex's dentistry media page. Too. Go see some of the transformations he's done. And the most of the p- stuff that you're seeing are people that you've actually done it for pro bono. Project Smile, yeah. Project Sport, mm. Project Smile, right? Yeah. Where you've literally reconstructed people's mouths and given everyone um, new smiles. And it, and it all goes back to the thing that we were talking about, you and I, about like, you'll be amazed at what changing someone's smile can do for their confidence, 100%. for their appearance. Like it unlocks this light. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And and I want to say thank you for that, man. Thank you for for doing yeah. that for us. But most importantly, thank you for doing it for people who need it. Mm. Right? You're yeah. a you're you're a, you're a godsend, bro. And I tell you this all the time. You're a you're a small man with a big heart. Thank you. Uh, and you're a true to form artist. Um, so on behalf of everyone you help, you even help us. Even though we're your clients, mm. you still you find really, time yeah. to help us with thank anything. So. For for us, for for people who are underprivileged that you've helped, I just want to say thank you, bro. Yeah, My thank you. Absolute You're pleasure. a godsend. Thank I'm you grateful for... that I can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and we love and appreciate you. And we know that a lot of people may not understand your brand or may have slipped on you, mm-hmm. especially but, in varsity. Yeah, when, when, but didn't sleep. when you are yeah, slept yeah. on, yeah. slept on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, here on <laughs> popcorn and the cheeses, we do not sleep on you. Yes. Appreciate. So because we people from the south, uh-huh. we wanna. Give you this token. Aha. Uh-huh. This is going to go in the practice. So ah, yes. Get yes. Comfortable yes. In the yes. practice in the corner hard. so we can see. Yeah. No, you understand. Have Yo, you ever man. done Sararama This is good for back, back support. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. Man? yeah. yeah. Before we let you go, man, because you're, you you're a Thank true you. uh, man of Baha'ian faith. Mm. Have you ever been in a fight? <laughs> yeah. I have had to turn the other cheek. Mm-mm. I've had to be like to I never I punch do. someone, but I had to get into a fight to stop someone from hurting themselves because they were very drunk uh, and they weren't understanding the consequences of what was happening. Pops too so I had to get involved in that sense. But no, like I'll be too worried about my teeth. If someone knocks you, boy, if someone knocks yeah, you, you once, you can't be a dentist without a tooth. Uh, you can't it's be a hectic, bro. <laughs> to fix things, no, no. I'm. Uh, uh, you can't be a dentist. I'm more of a peacekeeper. Yeah. Than a. Than a troublemaker. Troublemaker. No, I'm not about that life. Yo, it's man, like, doctor. I really appreciate you. Smile, Lex Leo. Lex Leo. Bro, you're a legend. You've carved a completely different path in what you're doing. Yeah. Thank you for being a pioneer. Thank, thank you for being Thanks, a genius bro. at what you do. Believe and in. thank you for loving what you do and the people that you do it for. And most importantly, thank you for joining us on Popcorn and Cheese, bro. Thank like, you for the I've, time. I've been asking, like, I've love. been asking you for a year, you know, like, ah, oh, bro, you know, we'd love to have you on the pod. And I never thought you'd agree. And here you are today. Uh, thank you so much, It's my bro. honor to be here. Thank you to the, the cheese family. Gang. Cheese thank gang. you to the Cheese Gang for... Watching this whole episode. Yeah. yeah. We're going to put yeah. all the handles. Lex, Leo, Dr. Smile, and Shore here Customs. Yes. Project Smile, Dr. Smile, Oral K. And there's of course, a lot. Smile Sonic. It's all hala got this cam. Smile Sonic. It's all look at the gold tooth. Is your gold tooth bronze? Reka Sonic Smile. Smile Sonic. It's a look back to gold. Smile Sonic. With <laughs> two your gold tooth silver. <laughs> Kumpa Pops' is white shed and load shedding midnight. <laughs> Available at your nearest disc camp worldwide. All right. Well, that's it from us, uh, from me, the corn that pops. And the cheese that's great. We, we are, are Robo Pops. Pops and, and just like the Smile Sonic, Sonic, we are out. Robo Pops. I'll be some cheese girl and I'm a cheese boy there. We motivate, then we laugh as well. Stay on brand, never hard to sell. Got real chats, now my LOL. So we both got gang and we blessed as hell. See a dollar story. Pets and I'm a guest, I'm nice and moy. You and I'm a bundles, not of joys. Let it's some pop pops and robot boys. Popcorn and cheese. Popcorn and cheese. Popcorn and cheese. Popcorn and cheese.